Bowling is hands down the most sought after skill in kayaking, and initially, the role is the most intensive skill to teach and learn, mainly because half the time, if not more, the student is underwater. However, if you keep the skill simple through a few basic orientations and learn how and why the upper body relates directly to the lower body, this skill can come quite quickly. But don't put too much pressure on yourself. Have fun exploring and spending time in your new underwater world. Because the more you do, the quicker the skill will come and the more you can apply the skill to more advanced maneuvers on the river. All right, let's get started. Four topics of special emphasis. One, you need to be comfortable upside down and not freaking out. And two, you need to understand some basic orientation. This video assumes you have the first but need work on the second. Third and fourth are sequence and timing. This directly references the hip snap, the key to the roll itself. So in this video, we will touch on orientation, sequence, and timing in that order. You will see some stylistic differences in people's roles, based on their body type, flexibility, and paddling style. However, successful roles depend on some basic orientation, and a clear separation of upper and lower body through the core. As you can see here in this example, the boat moves independently from the upper half of the body while the lower half and the core work to roll the boat back and forth. This works best on an axis through the hips, which keeps the core neutral through the rolling of the boat or the hip snap. When the upper half of the body deviates forward or backward from this axis, it causes the core to activate preemptively, causing a stall in the roll of the boat. You should try this on your own in your boat to feel the differences. Now let's apply this to a hip snap. When hip snapping along the hip axis, it activates the appropriate areas that will help in proper execution of the roll, primarily your obliques and the lower knee which drives you upward. When you deviate forward, you're causing a crunching of those muscles and you are activating both knees causing the roll to stall near the end. When laying backwards, you are causing a hyperextension of these muscles and are unable to effectively activate the lower knee. Now let's apply this to a full roll where you have to assume this position. Pay attention to the orientation here. The body is extended out along the hip axis. This winds up the obliques and activates the lower knee which drives the boat up. The same thing applies when you have a paddle in your hands. Notice the body orientation. Once again, this winds up the obliques and activates that lower knee, helping you drive the boat upwards. Let's talk about sequence and timing. Sequence, simply put, is the order in which your body comes upwards during the roll and timing is more in tune with when the hip snap occurs with the body orientation we spoke of previously. Let's take a look at the sequence first. No matter what role you use, the sequence or the order that we move upward can be broken down into three parts. One, the boat. Two, the body. And then finally, the head. Let's watch this again. First the paddler sets up and begins his extension, then the sequence of the hip snap. Again, one, the boat, two, the body, and then finally, again, the head and the paddle. Let's compare two different roles, the sweep and the sea to sea. What you will notice is that they both use proper sequencing of boat, body, then head. The differences lie in the timing of when everything occurs, so let's watch this again. Number one, the boat. Number two, the body and then finally, the head and the paddle recover. So what happens if you do this hip snap out of sequence, meaning your head or your body come up first? Well, let's take a look at our paddler here. Well, he didn't have very much success there. Again, he lifts his head and his body, still no success. There you go. So why is this occurring? Let's take a closer look. What you do with the upper half of your body has a direct effect on what occurs on the lower half of your body. When lifting your head and your torso, you're actually pulling on your top knee, effectively driving the boat back towards the surface of the water. Let's take a second look. Oops, lifts his head. Only when he relaxes his torso and follows the proper sequence will the hip snap be successful. Now let's talk about the timing of the hip snap by comparing the sweep and the C2C rolls, and finally giving a demonstration of a delayed hip snap. Now the biggest difference in the two rolls that you will notice is the timing of the hip snap itself. You see almost no difference in body extension throughout either roll. The importance here is what they actually share in common. One is that the body extension is out to the hip axis, and two, 
the hip snap occurs before or at the hip axis itself, but never after. So what happens if the hip snap comes too late or past the hip axis? Well, as you can see, it causes a stall in the roll because of a loss of potential energy in the core. Watch again. Throughout this video, you may have noticed an emphasis on the hip axis as well as the hip snap. Truth be told, there is a whole laundry list of problems that can occur while learning the roll, but many, if not all of them, can be alleviated with a focus on these two things. One of the tools used in this video can be used by you at home to help diagnose some of the issues you may be having. Using some sort of inflatable to practice the hip snap in full roll can help you start to self-diagnose issues that are preventing you from achieving the roll. We will discuss this further in another episode.